and say, good, God bless you to PI. You. you know, it's funny because, yeah, <laughs> I was supposed to preach and the reason why I'm not going to take long is because she has done 55%. You see, this issue of blessing was such a big deal. Wow. It's such a big deal that before Isaac died, he made sure he had to hand it over. You see, the blessing is so potent, it cannot afford to die with the one that received it without him giving it. Did you hear what I said? It means that even when Jesus was going, it, do you know it is the blessing that gave you the Holy Ghost? Yes. Come on. What is the second name for the Holy Ghost? Say, I will give you a gift. Yes. It's a gift. Yes, sir. That is the yes. blessing. Yes. And I started to think about this. And I started to look at the undoing of Esau. And Esau's undoing was in two folds. Follow me closely. The first undoing was of Esau was that he had a rebellious spirit. And nobody really talks about this. But the Bible recorded that there was a time, I think it's somewhere in 27 or 28, Genesis 27 or 28. The Bible said that Esau went and he married a Hittite. In fact, he married two of them. And the Bible says that this thing grieved his mother and father. Just in case you're like, hey, he married, let me explain to you. Isaac, the Bible said that when Abraham was going to look for a wife for Isaac, he called the servant. He said, see, there are certain things that protect the blessing. And one of those things is that it must be housed in a lineage that understands the blessing. So go and find a woman from my tribe. And when you find her, bring her. Because this one will understand the blessing. You see, there are certain women that they are cause God and die Christianity. They don't understand the blessing. You see, the, third, the first wife of Job did not understand the blessing. Because the wife of Job at a season in her life told her husband, it takes you to understand he said, cause God and die. Two things that are very, very painful to tell a man that you should cause God then the second one, give yourself over to death. Because she does not understand the blessing. And you see, one of the things that is so painful in the world is we yoke, off, we yoke ourselves with people that do not understand your blessing. They do not understand the anointing that is upon your life. They do not understand the spoken words of God. You see, when they come to you and they tell you, ah, oh, she just she, bo, she, she, so that only she, she, they are speaking because they do not know that what they are trying to introduce you to, you were born with it. You were born with a blessing. But because of lack of wisdom, they have now had to settle for a lesser degree of what God has given to them and they get it with a lot of toiling. And they preserve it also with a lot of toiling. So the first mistake was that he was yoked with an Hittite. Now, back to that story. The Bible said that Abraham will say, go and look for her. And that was how they found Rebekah. Watch closely, watch closely. Rebekah was a product of someone that understood the blessing. Now, this is what happened. When it was time for Isaac to go, Baba was already dim in the eyes. Rebecca knew. Can I ask you a question? Who plotted the coup? Who sowed the seed in the head of Jacob? It was Rebecca. And I was looking at the scripture. I was like, God, what are you saying with this? He said, can you imagine the blessing in the hand of a Hittite? It will die. Do you know the risk of that? There will be no the God of Abraham, Isaac, and 
Because every blessing of God must be transferred to another generation. The same way Jesus transferred it to us, and you now transfer it to your children. And that is the mystery of Christianity. That we keep transferring a blessing that even when people cannot say, hey, this is your God, they cannot doubt that he is real. So the Bible says that that was the first thing that caused the undoing of Jacob. The second thing was he also commonized the blessing. Yes. You see, it's one thing for you to marry a woman that does not understand the blessing. When you now commonize the blessing, there's no hope there. Because I looked at it. That why would God allow this happen to Jacob? I mean to Esau. Why? So, before he lost the birthright to the scheme or the plot, he had lost it to porridge. Yes. And you see what happens is this. This is what the world tells you. What is the good? And that was what, those were the words of Esau. He says, of what good is my birthright when I can, I'm hungry and I may die? Of what use is my Christianity? It's not cuckoo walking. Where was God when my destiny helper died? The Bible said, God started to tell me something. He said, because of those two events, Esau lost what he got by privilege. He did not get it by hard work. How many of you got being born as the first child as hard work? It's privilege. So meaning God will give you blessings, not necessarily because you are the fastest prayer warrior in this place. Not because you are doing prayer tron. But because it is his joy that you carry a blessing. So the Bible now makes us start to understand in Romans 8, I think verse 28, no verse 29, that Jesus now has now become the firstborn. Now Jesus has taken up that role again that Esau misused. And he has now, by reason of firstborn, now gathered us as his brothers and sisters. So we share of the glory of the blessing. So even in your modern day, you were born blessed. Tell your neighbor you were born blessed. Another thing that makes you sell the birthright of your blessings is for temporary discomfort. Tell your neighbor temporary discomfort. Tell your neighbor again, temporary discomfort. Now, we all know the story of Abraham. The Bible calls him the man of what? In fact, by extension, he became the father of what? And one of the things that he was trusting God was a child. And God told him, I'm not just going to give you any other child. A blessing came upon that child, yes or no? Now, the Bible now recorded in Genesis 26. You can open your Bible to verse 1. Then the Bible says, and there was a famine. Every time you see the Bible emphasize something, know that there is a reason why he's saying it. It's not because they want to fill up letters. No. The Bible says in Genesis 26 verse 1, it says, a severe famine now struck the land as had happened before in Abraham's time. You know what God was trying to say there? Whatever it is that you are going through, your forefathers, they went through and they still got the blessing. You see, Pastor Lumdeba, you don't know what I'm going through. I'm sorry, but I don't need to. All I need to tell you is that whatever it is, somebody has gone through it and he secured the blessing. For the next generation. Auntie, uncle, go through it. The Bible says the famine was as intense as the type of his fathers. Don't tell me that God, this is happening to me, is peculiar to me. Eh, God, eh, eh, eh. What is like Farah Bale? What you should be asking is God, what is the strategy here? 
So typical of us, we get into challenges in life. Things that confront the spoken words. And the Lord told me something very early. He says, see, what the devil's most, his primary job is to checkmate what I have said to you. Elementary learning of the devil 101. Did God really say? Everything that the devil uses as arsenal is laden in that phrase, did God really say? God bless you. Did God really say you are blessed? It's an assault on what God has said about you. It's an assault of Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28. So, a famine broke out as like that of time of Abraham. Typical of Isaac. Isaac also wanted to tow the foot of his father. The Bible said, and God warned him, do not go to Egypt. Like I said, be has preached 55%. So it will make sense everything I'm saying because I'm just here to tighten. That the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. You see, our assets as Christians is that we spend more time in the world so that we are effective. Let me explain what it means. You want to be a CEO, right? The natural order of things is that you go through a long list of training, of work, of toiling, and one day, maybe just one day, you may get there. But the advantage you have is if you can only know what God has said concerning you, your CEO journey will be faster than others. Because there is something about your DNA that corresponds with what God has said. It's the blessing. So the Bible said that there was this famine. And just as Isaac was about to permutate and combine it. Because in that same time, I think in Genesis 12 or something. When his father also experienced famine. The Bible said his father went to Egypt. But God said, no. You stay in Egypt. It's like God saying, God, it is happening in Nigeria. And see, when I'm saying this, I'm not against those that are doing it. You just need to be led. For those that come to this church, I'm sure you, have, you, you know my position on relocating. I'm not a citizen of Nigeria alone. I'm a citizen of the world. So green passport cannot hold me down. But you see, it is not just about confessing that word. It's about knowing when God wants you to move. So it's like now where everybody feels like, you see, it's not working in Nigeria. It is working elsewhere. It is working elsewhere for those that God has told that your green pastor is elsewhere. If your green pastor is not elsewhere, what you will be doing is that you will be a slave to the man that knows his green pastures. So God said, everybody will naturally go to Egypt. You don't go because I want to show you something. That you were already blessed. Are you listening to me? That you are already blessed. So the Bible says, he told him, do not go there. But go to the land of the Philistines and be a foreigner there. You see, and when I was reading that scripture, you know, the Holy Spirit was telling me that it's not cuckoo like as if I'm not cuckoo going to tell them to cuckoo go. I will still tell them to go. It's just that for some of you, the change of location may not be the one you want. Some of you, God may be telling you, go to Ibadan. And it came with a laughter. <laughs> Sir, Lord, there's a difference between abroad and Ibadan. But it is only where the land is green. You know, Pierre told me something that really blessed my heart. We, we saw, there was a, a daughter of ours that was looking for a church and she told us she found this new church in Ibadan, right? Ibadan, right? And we were listening to the guy and that guy was prolific. In fact, he looked like Lagos material in Ibadan. And I said to my wife, I know Pierre said to me, you see, God has sent this man, no? And all this glory was away. Ibadan. Because he knew that there will be children that will need to be in Ibado. But they need the word of Lagos. The word like Lagos. Let me not say like, you know what I'm trying to say. It's not like I say Lagos is where the word is. But everything that you will call, oh, this is a man that is deep. He had it. But his location was not the most favorable. Can I tell you the truth? If God has said that man should go there, everything he needs to be everything in life, to be everything that you look at him and say you are a blessed man is there. Yes, so it is not about, did you know what happened when Lot 
started to have a predisposition about what he think a green pastor would look like. You see, God was telling me something. He says, see, be very careful the analogy people use to choose green pastors. Be careful. And God started to teach me about how feelings and things can be wrong. You know, the Bible said concerning Jacob, I'm, I'm just going to digress and I'll go back to the message. The Bible said when Jacob wanted to give the blessings, he was visually impaired, yes? So, normal science guys, all of us that went to school, it is said that when one dies, the other ones, what? Heightens. That's what they say. That when you lose your sight, your sense of hearing, your sense of smell, your sense of everything, sharpens up. That's, that's what it says. So in this particular case, Isaac, sir. Thank you, not Jacob. Isaac. Isaac was impaired and he sends his son to give him his best food. My friend will call it a sharo. <laughs> And the Bible said, this woman called Rebecca was able to trick his senses. You know what I'm trying to tell you? It's a sure plug. It's a sure plug. It can still not work if God is not directing you. Ah. The woman said, number one, I know the things that this man is going to use for litmus test. First things first, wear your brother's clothes. That one already is going to cancel his sense of smell. Then you know what? The, the skin, don't throw it away. Use it as your fall. Because that would also cancel his sense of touch. Then she said, you know what? There is something even about that smell of goat. You know, goats can be very. They, it's awesome. It is smell. You know. So the father said, The voice. It's like the voice of Jacob. But let me trust my senses. What would he have stopped Jacob, Isaac, to say, Lord, give me insight on who this is? But you see, that is one of our biggest challenges, that we are quick to trust our senses. Our senses are the first judgment of whether God is even there. Right. How many of you have gone to churches? And you're like, I just feel God's presence here. Ma, it may just be cool AC. Because sometimes God's word can be beating you. But it is pruning you. I just love that church. Everything just looks posh. It's great. But maybe before you just step out and say, I, I, I belong here. Just Lord, is this where the word is sitting for me? If you understand this, you will not be running about prophet hunting. So what am I saying, guys? Even the things that look like they don't deceive, they can be deceived. Are you with me? So God said something, and that's where I'm going to go. Look at what God said to Joseph. I mean to Isaac. Genesis 26. Now see what he says. He says, Then the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt, but do as I tell you. Tell your neighbor, do as I tell you. Does this also remind you of what he told his father? Go to a land I will show you. Do as I tell you. Ah, I know some of you are here. I want sure word. Sure word sometimes can be progressive word. As you they go, you go the year. As you go they go, you go the year. As you go they go, you go the year. The problem is we want to know his will in a nutshell. Forgetting that we use our lifetime to know his perfect will. So he said, I, I will tell you. I will show you. I would instruct you. I've shared my testimony with you guys. After praying and praying and praying, after a while, I stopped praying it. After I resume it, God was my will. Lord, my will. My, ha, I will read God with my will. You can say, you will know I'm a serious boy. I will hear Papa again. Papa will say, you see, if you don't know what you are doing, you're, ah, God, I don't know. And I prayed this thing. I prayed and prayed. 
And when God will speak, the blessed day he will speak, he said, all that you will do, lie it in your tongue. Ah! After we have waited, Esa, you don't have dictionary definition. Eh, break it down. Eh? What does that mean? Am I a comedian? Am I a singer? And he gave me that word. Because more often than not, God's word is progressive. You know what that means? It means that every part of your life finds expression from that word. Because the Bible says, in him we consist. So when God tells you that I will bless you, don't be too quick to say, God, how much? Because for all you care, it can be that I'm going to bless you with children. It could be that I'm going to bless you with a vision. But you see, when God tells you, I will bless you, there is a rejoicing you must use to make him know that you know that his thoughts for you are of not of to give you a hope and a what is it that we are most afraid for? We are most afraid for an uncertain future. And God is saying that you don't get it. The thing that you are most afraid for, I have sorted it. That is actually what makes working with God easy. Because you know that even though me and blind are the follow person with Sabi Road. So God tells Jake, Isaac, that I will tell you. And I feel God is saying to somebody today, I will tell you. Is somebody there? I say God is saying to you, where your honeycomb is, where your cookie jar is, where your pot of gold is, I will tell you. I will tell you. I will tell you. God does not delight in hide and seek. I will tell you. Now, see what the Bible says here. It says, verse 3, live here as a foreigner and that is the blessing. And I will be with you and bless you. Guys, that was the blessing. That he would be with me. You know, God was telling me something. He said, riches are so fickle in heaven. That is why when you guys make stones or kota or bitumen, what you use for your road, we use gold. You didn't get that. He says, the way you put premium on these things, they are so ordinary because we use them for a road. The Bible says the streets of heaven are paved with what? They didn't spell. They did not mix it with GL so that it can continue shining. No. Pure gold. Then he now comes and he says the cattle on a thousand hills are mine. Then he now comes and says the earth the whole earth. Some of you, you are, ah, if I can just marry eh, eh, Elegushi's children, ha, ah, I've made it. The full earth. The full earth. Plus, he won the queen of England. Oh, she's dead now. The king of England cannot even give up. It is his. Now, somebody is asking, eh, let him give me now. If he, you don't need it for your assignment, would he not... It will make you go, yeah. All right. Where am I going with this? The Bible says, I will be with you and I will bless you. That was the promise. So the question I want to ask you guys, is God with you? So can you tell your neighbor, then I am blessed? You see why in church and as a people in Hope Nation, we put priority on not messing up with that presence. Uh, Shebi is just a little sin. It's just a little this. No, it's not little. It's as little as your mindset being equals to that of Esau. You didn't get that. The, the, the way you look at the presence of God being so little is the same way Esau looked at his birthright as so little. So then it makes sense that someone like David will say, Cast me not away 
from thy oh and he knew that when this the presence is gone joy is gone so he says re the what pause pause the joy of my what what is the joy of my salvation? The joy that I know that you are with me. That is it. The joy of my salvation is that I am not alone. That I am a sinner and I have been died for and now the life I live, I live to the Son of Christ. That is the joy of my salvation. The joy of I can call upon him and he will, and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me. And not be that is the joy of my salvation. He knew something. So the Bible says, and I will be with you. And I will bless you. Now see what the Bible says. Don't forget that, was there not a famine, yes or no? There was a famine, fantastic. Alright, now see what the Bible says in verse, verse 12. I don't want to bore you with a lot of the things, but there were places where he was really now blessings. In fact, you, if you want to see all the blessings that God transferred to Isaac, you can find that in 20, um, 26 verse 4. It says, I will cause your descendants. No, in fact, it says, I hereby confirm that I will give all these lands to you and your descendants. Just as I solemnly promised your father Abraham. I will cause your descendants to become as numerous as the stars of the sky. And I will give them all this land. And through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. I will do this because Abraham... Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will do this because Abraham listened to me and obeyed all my instructions, commandments, decrees, and instructions. So, Isaac stayed in Gerah. Now, see what the blessing looks like for a child of God, verse 12. The Bible says, and when Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grains than he planted for the Lord blessed him. When I was sitting here, I heard this song. Ba ba fa ye mi. And that was God saying to me, if my children will let me, your life will really be a wonder. But it's as far as you believe that you are blessed. So here is a man that is a foreigner in a place. Another part of the scripture that I did not bother to read to you was just like his father. He has fine wife as a foreigner. He was afraid that they would take his wife from him. You see, the mindset, when you don't know that you are a blessed man, who gave him Rebecca? It was God. Was it there when he selected? Was, you know the Bible? He didn't select Rebecca, right? It was his servant that selected Rebecca. What made his servant choose right? Did he not make it, did it not occur to you? That that same thing that led the servant to pick a woman like this is able to preserve her from being stolen from you. It's the same way when some of you, small money that God gives you, you now tie your entire Akagom lifestyle on it. Not knowing that the way Ibiti O Wagon is God that brought you there. I'm not saying be frivolous, but believe. Believe that God that brought me here will sustain me. Have you also noticed that people get more anxious when they have more money? You don't know. Okay, you have not taught some level of wealth. There is a level of wealth you will have that the mere fear that eh, I will now start to enter over. This was you. That when you finally jump the bus and you find the seat and you entered, you are dancing there. Hey, 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 now me enter. All of a sudden, that dynamics changes. That is why God has to suppress the power money has. Because anything that you worship elevates. If you worship money, it takes more room. It says, okay, parlor is not okay for me. Let's enter bedroom. From bedroom, have a balcony. In fact, let me be between your toilet. Because anything you worship elevates. And that's why the Bible says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. When we magnify the Lord, it's so that he can be magnified in our hearts. It's not like I said God is elastic band. No. 
when you magnify him, it's your heart that he is gaining more room. Lord, I worship you. You are beautiful beyond description. God does not now have tight jeans and say, hey, this girl is whining me. The jeans no size, I don't too big. No, it is in you. He's taking more space in you and he's crushing things that have tried to be demigods in your heart. That's what he's doing. Praise God. So the Bible says all these things started to happen because God blessed him. I'm saying to you that what looks like just farming, I'm a farmer, God can put a blessing on it and it will yield a hundred fold. But you just must be sure that you are walking in the ordinances of God. Are you with me? Another thing God showed me with this scripture, and I'm going to end with this. The king was also a rich man by virtue of his position. Now, he was not ordained blessed. We are ordained blessed. The king was a Philistine. Come on, follow me now. So by virtue, you, you want to bump your neighbor if they are sleeping and just say, auntie, uncle, wake up. <laughs> I can wow. Be in the spirit. Now, the king, by virtue of his position, was rich. Isaac, by virtue of the promise, was blessed. I love that. Now, the Bible did not say the riches of God make it rich. Blessings brings riches. Riches cannot birth riches. In fact, when you want to look about money, the Bible says money has wings. It can what? It can JP. What makes it stay is it's in the life of a blessed man. And you know how I know? The Bible said concerning Isaac that because Isaac was blessed and the king was rich, this is what happened. As Isaac started to farm, the Bible says, and Isaac became rich till he became exceedingly rich. Now, his riches started to intimidate the riches of the king and his men. They said, you know what? Go away from here. I just want to remind you, every time you do that, you are not operating under the blessing. The blessing no they finish. You know why the blessing no they finish? Because it's not for you alone. So God is the one that keeps the tap flowing. So when you are singing, feel my cup, Lord, it's not so that you can be a proud owner of a container that is full of water. No, you must be a proud owner of a container that can dispense more water. Eh? A bigger jar will give more water to thirsty people. Not that I am a big jar for nothing. No. So the Bible said that let me show you the hallmark of a blessed man and the attitude of a blessed man. This is where we round off. The Bible said, when they said, go away, did he fight them? You know why he didn't fight them? God had told him in the beginning that you are a fall Rina. He was not an entitled brat. Small place that they've given you to now manage resources. Just small CEO position. Just small ma branch manager. Just bra oh, see, see, you, are not the, you are not the tree manager. You are just a branch. They don't go hear what? They don't go hear what? You become a tyrant overnight. And it's common to everybody. Hey, it's common to everybody. You must identify your own early and kill it. This morning, one of my team members did something to me. Ah, and I was furious. And I started pra, 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 and I exhausted my foolishness. As I dropped the call, God said that you are not going to go back. And you are going to apologize. And you are going to ask him, Sir, how do you want me to lead you? Wow. 
because oh yes 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 she know she know backstory yeah and I, I i called him and i said you know i you know god humble yourself so that you can preserve what he has given you the moment you start to vash the up you're on your way out so i said you know i speak to you from the place of passion it's not like as if i want you to fail but when you do these things it pains me so i'm begging you how can i manage you and i found out that what god was looking for was not the line manager that knew how to sharply distinguish between right and wrong was a line manager that can show right and wrong with grace that's the hallmark of a blessed man you see why am i agitated because there is fear hey this boy is going to mess up my career the thing we i don't do i'm reacting as a bastard god brings a a, a a young vibrant tool that you cannot see his future but god has seen his future and god is hoping that just as he picks you up from the dunghill you can show mercy and pick this boy up and you get there and this is your venting power i'm warning you i will hey half the time those people they outlive the people half the time those people are in the company there you go oh yes god <laughs> I learned something in management. If there are 10 junior staff, it pays the organization to sack one ogre than to let go of the 10 people. Do you know the cost of training of the 10? Do you know the gaps those people, even though they are not skilled, though, just the fact that they are at that place, they are filling a gap. You, we can easily take you out because when you lack emotional intelligence in the place of work, you are of no good to any employer. Hear this. So, the hallmark of a blessed man. The Bible says the moment they said you are getting too rich, you are starting to disturb our people. You know, say I be king, I liked you. This was the same king that when he learned that the wife was the wife, you know the story now. Isaac, his body was on another level. The Bible says the king saw him caressing his wife, everything burst. You see, that's why you cannot keep you can't keep living a lie, it will come out, it will come out. The father did it. They chased the father out. Did you know that was what happened to Abraham? They chased him out. This one, the king was even very benevolent. He said, well, foretell me now. If somebody has slept with your wife now, you have caused trouble for us. Now, I make a decree. Nobody should ever touch this man. Great king. But in the face, in the face of adversity, riches have a way of making you very insecure. It's blessing that has a way of getting you secured. Yes. When the guy saw that, hey, my people are shouting, my people are agitating. Ha, I'm making go. I don't want to lose this. Hey, 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 I will not have odd list again. People now expect me in the road. Hey, I beg, I beg, I beg. They go, they go, they go. Palpitations, anxiety. Because he was functioning on the place of just being rich. When we operate from the place of being blessed. So guess what the Bible says? The Bible says that Jacob, uh, Isaac said, okay, no problem. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, no problem. The Bible says, and Jacob found a well. And he, Isaac, sorry, I keep mixing it up. Just follow me. And Isaac found the well. Guys, in the hand of a believer, finding well, no, they tire us. The Bible says, and he found the well. And he started to dig. And there was water. And the man from Gerah said, no, this is our land. This is our land. You cannot take the water. The guy's like, I'm a blessed man. Okay. Now somebody is looking at me and saying, Apostle Nuna, is that not being stupid? You see, let me explain something to you. There is such a scripture that says, I will fight thy battles. And you shall hold your peace. A lot of you want him to fight your battles, but you don't want to do the one he said you should do. It is a contract. My contract is I am the fighter. You be making peace everywhere. Did you hear me? I can cause trouble. You be seeking peace everywhere. I will fight the battle. You hope. What does it mean? What am I holding? 
I'm holding my mic. And by holding my mic, my voice is being amplified. Hold your peace. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. The world wants to take it away from you with strife. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Did he say be at wealthy with all men? Be at what? Hold it. You get out now. Hold it. So the Bible says, the first well, he gave it a name. He said this well shall be called argument. And I started to think about it. That what are you trying to tell me, Lord? Argument. He says, you see, argument is one of the things that rob us of who we are. You know what argument is? When you are trying to insist on something. Do you know who I am? You know who you are, it's okay. We may not know, but if you know, good for you. You lose not only your peace, you also lose your position when you start to engage in un unnecessary arguments. The Bible says, and he left that well. And he, the Bible says, and his guys found another well. You don't get. So you are working in this job. And you are doing all you can. And you are really there. You are giving, you are busting the hours. You are really doing all that you can. But there's no antiquated here there. That our own is to rise by falling orders. And they have told you, Mark Dafun, don't Dafun. If she show you one, you give her double. Ahead. Yeah. Then both of you are now on a competition of who do pass. And as you are trying to outdo her, you are leaving the place of the presence. Then one day you find out that though you won the war, you, are, you still don't have peace. Because when the war started, you traded peace. Yes, Lord. There is a peace that comes when God fights your battle. There is also a lack of peace that can happen when you fight your battle. You don't get me. There is a way you will hustle so hard, destroy everybody. When you get here, it's, it's still the pain. Yeah. Yeah. So the Bible said the first one, he, 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 I like Isaac. Isaac said, ah, this well, argument, I avoid you. I avoid you. The Bible says, then he found another one. Then the same guys came. He said, he's still our land. Ah! Some of you, your own threshold, you feel like as if, a lot of you used to tell God that God, twice I'm a fool. You say, I have to even go back to him to my roots, to, to uproot that language. I'm not the kind of child that they insult and I go home to bring the reply. No, he day. He day. Why must he day when God has taken it away? So you see that it really shows that are you really born again? So the second one, they came again. And you see, I love the scriptures because if it happened just once, all of you genuinely, all of you, I, we believe that we can handle some things once. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Let it happen again. I'm not going to mention one of my friends here. I'm going to look away. There's a way she walks back in the day because God has healed her now. <laughs> There's a way she walks. Are you saying I'm closing my eyes? <laughs> So that you don't know what I'm talking about. There's a way she walks. When she gets up in her emotions, F you, F you, F you, F you. Ah, ah, apostle, apostle, apostle. Apostle. Not, not Aka. No. Another person. It's a female. <laughs> it's a female. It's a she. And after her, her, her emotions have calmed down, she will now have to because no matter how high you go 
God will bring you to your knees if you want to move forward. Because what we are talking about is peace. Yes. Do you know there is a way God will even want you to apologize that if you do it half measured, you still not get the peace as a reward. Um, I, I, I just, I just, I just, so I think Kalolo Ilega, eh? I just, I just, I just feel like, you know, we really don't understand ourselves. And see, that was not the message. The message was not understanding. It was apology. It was apology. I am sorry I acted in a way that I should not have. Period. And instantly, joy restored. You can function again. So the Bible says the second well they came. And yet again, he had to step aside. But a good man, he also named it. You know what he named it? Hostility. You see, at that point in time, what was, what was going on? What's the difference between argument and hostility? Arguments, two people need to argue. Hostility is one person. Hostility is a response to when you offer peace to people that don't know. You didn't get it. I'm a, I'm a great person. I'm loving people. I'm doing all my best. This is what I'm offering. I'm offering good. When I don't see one that understands what I carry, they, they are hostile to me. You, you, you're still not getting it. More often than not, hostility is one way. If two of you are hostile to each other, it's argument. Hostility is the knowing that something is, something is done to you that is wrong. So that means you have to be just to identify unjustness or injustice or mis misjust. Yeah. So at that point in time, I feel the disposition of his heart was saying, God, it's on them. At this point, I know that my life is more than the bless, is more than the riches. They are being hostile to me. This is not about me still trying to say, God, they are cheating me. No, it's on them. But I understand something that I am a blessed man. So am I saying that sometimes you may on your journey of being blessed be cheated? Yes, it does happen. But that is not when you should now hold a grudge. The moment you hold a grudge, you enter into argument. You must try your possible best to let God heal you. So that when you see the Bible says, do good to those that hate you. By doing that, what do you do? You heap coal on their head. If you are also doing evil on those that do evil against you, the call lands on both of you's head. There must be a distinguishing factor. You know the thing God told me? He says, if my children know me, they will know that I can tire their enemies with your blessing. This man created a career from going to Isaac to take what Isaac had worked for. As unjust as that was, they got tired. Isaac did not stop being blessed. The Bible says, and after he gave up the well called hostility, his guys found another way. And nobody contended against him. And just after that, the Bible says he now found another well again. They took two. God gave him two. And one of the wells, he called it oath. You know why he called it oath? And this is where I'm going to show you as a blessed man. The blessing is not so that God can always differentiate the rich from the poor. It's so that God can bring the poor to him. You know what now happened to the king? The king now noticed that this man is blessed beyond measure. Nothing can be done against this man. This, my boys, have hurt this man, but he did not stop his blessing. I have chased this man away, but he did not stop his blessing. I have been cruel to him, but he has not stopped being blessed. Ha! Ah, these are not the people you fight with, sir. Can we have an alliance? 
a political position found alliance with a civilian that carried God. He says, can we make a treaty? You know, there is a way people would have hurt you and you are so blessed that they start to feel threatened. And one of the ways that they can appease is to ensure that if you are ever going to want to hurt people, don't hurt me, please. So they start to find their way back into your life and they are starting to now be good. The good they did not do before, they are trying to be good now. Some of us now still feel the test there. You know, that's when you now rehash all the things of the past. While you can keep a safe distance, do not hold in unforgiveness, please. Because you understand that the reason why you are blessed is because of the God factor. Do you understand? All that we have, God has given us. And all that we have, He will sustain it. That is why my face must always be focused on Him. So what is the hallmark of a blessed man? One that does not yoke himself with people that does not understand that he is blessed. And that is why that Bible will say, Blessed is he that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Sadly, he saw married and ungodly. He did not only walk, he, he, he became one with her. Sad. The Bible says, or stand in this, on, uh, or stand with, stand with, it, what? No, it is walk, stand, sit. Because it's a progression. Don't walk. Stand in the way of sinners. Then don't sit in the seat of the scuffle. Rather than all those three, what do you do? Delight in the law. The second mistake of Esau. Esau did not delight in his promise. Are you seeing the correlation in scriptures? Are you seeing it? He walked with a Hittite. Then he did not delight in what God has given him as a firstborn. That was a gift. So there was no way he could be planted by the rivers of water. His leaves could not blossom. Also, ever he did could not prosper. He lost one of his biggest advantages. Do you know what was so painful about the, the thing that happened to Esau? The Bible said, when the father was praying for him, I, I, you know, I don't even consider what the father gave him as a, pray, as, as a blessing. He said that you will be a man of war. You will fight all the days of your life. You will serve your brothers. He could have not just cuckoo asked for anything because anything after the blessing, ekbeloku. Then that was not even the part that blew my mind. The Bible said, the Bible said, part of the blessing, here, here, mercy. When you are tired, you would break the yoke of your brother off your own neck do you know what that yoke was unforgiveness if there's anything that would have been the blessing there was you have cuckoo lost inheritance don't now die in bitterness but you see even that is your choice so the hallmark of a blessed man is one that understands that from the foundations of the earth he was already blessed. And no one has the right to take their blessings from them. They may try to tamper with it, but you must understand that you are working with God and he is the source. And he would from anywhere provide resources to justify the fact that you are a blessed man. So what will happen in these three days is like Isaac, you will be hearing words and words will come to you like the gift of being a firstborn. But you must take it to heart to be diligent to take up this word that God has given you. And you must, you must defend it. In the midst of hunger, you must defend it. In the midst of people that will want to make you feel like as if your church is too much, your spirituality is, is your disadvantage. All of us, we don't blow because we don't jar. You must defend it. I am taking my cross because I am not hustling to be rich. I was born to be blessed. Our journeys will not be the same and that's why we, we don't go the same place. I respect whatever you say is working for you, but I walk in the covenant of blessing. And in that covenant, this road is not a road for me. Then when you do that, like Psalms 1, delight yourself in the Lord. 
You know what delight of yourself in the law means? It says, sip out or squeeze or extract joy, extract joy from the promises that God has given you. Yes. When he says, sing, O barren, for many are the children of the barren than the one that has. What is he saying? Find situations in your life, excuse me, where your joy is hinged not first on the thing happening, but first on the fact that it was said to you. That God, you said this to me. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. That is you delighting. I'm going to say last, this last thing. Every time you experience a season of delay, watch out. It's either two things. Sometimes it's a test of what you actually call the things that gives you joy. Sometimes God just wants to see, would you start to act like you know that I have given you? Or do you want to wait to show that you know that I've given you? There's a posture my wife and I have concerning our children. And it's the fact that if I was yet a sinner and he died for me, I had no reason to like him, but he died. It is not now that I know him that as elementary as children, he will deny me. That is a joy that keeps us going. The second thing that, has come, that we have also come to understand that when he comes late with God, it always comes big. Always comes big. Because it must be consistent with the word that says when the Lord turned around so it means that God understands that you are first in captivity. Then he is making plans to turn it around. But when he now do, does what he said he would do, your response will be like, ah. We were like them that, ah. Eh? Eh, he she ye. Eh, he she you. So, because of this thing, we are not to part out when we come and we carry your baby. Because we know that this is just a testament that God is doing it and he's doing it and it's not a problem. But you see, the moment we start to get into a panic attack, we start to open our portals for suggestions that don't matter. Am I saying that be thoughtless? Am I saying that do not, do not, do not desire to want to have these things? I'm saying yes, desire it. But when you desire it, go to God and say, God, I know your word. You see why when in church we tell you that find a scripture for one thing that you are going through it's because it is that scripture that can usher you into the joy to believe that you are not that your circumstance that is why you must find the applicable word hmm? so like i said in this season i want to beg of you if there's any word god gave me for this recalibrate is that tell my children to not take with levity the gift of my word and the gift of my presence in all that you are going to do when you go to your room today just before you sleep or you start to respond to the F many emails and text messages just say God I know you are with me I know I hear you I know my heart is receptible to hear you and I know I will do your will and when you start to have that type of consciousness guys I can assure you you will hear can we rise up who is a blessed man are you trying to be blessed or you were born blessed so I am I am blessed I am blessed every day of my life I am blessed when I wake up in the morning, when I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. Oh, oh, oh. Jacob was a blessed man on a particular day. He did not have pillow to use to sleep. He used a rock. But even with a rock, he had encounters. Your room may not be the most pleasurable of places. It may not look like your queen size bed that you are coming from. It may seem to be a little lower than the class that you were born with. 
But can I tell you that you can have an encounter here? You can have an encounter that will set you up for life. But do you believe it? So I am blessed.